In this 10th and penultimate episode for the season, I explore the area of the check-in port of Apur and then sail to Motorua Island in the Bay of Islands and on to Fungamumu Bay on my way to the major sailing center of Fungaray Bay. After completing check-in, I motored around to my berth in the Bay of Islands Marina and Kent and Michelle on Jack Iron kindly gave me this video clip. I was up early my first morning in Opur and walked up the hill from the village, passing the school where they have the civilized starting time of 9 a.m. so nobody was around. The neatness and cleanliness of New Zealand is reflected in this sign at a park, and the quirkiness of a bus school bus stop was charming. On the way back, this was the view from the top of the bay beyond the marina. That afternoon, I did a two-hour hike on their coastal trail to the nearby town of Paihia, parts of which were nominally closed after several storms that hit the North Island during the spring. It was a lovely walk past tree ferns, on a boardwalk through mangroves, and with seats with views for breaks. Along the way, each cove had many sailboats on moorings, with their tenders neatly stacked on shore. By the time I finally reached Paihia and had fish and chips for dinner, my legs were toast, so I made up a hitchhiking sign to get back to Opur. The next day, I made up another sign to put on my old dinghy, which I left at the dinghy dock at the marina, and it disappeared within an hour as I had bought a new high-field dinghy that fits well on the foredeck and actually holds air. Another project was finally taking all stainless steel parts off my anchor tackle in favor of a single rated galvanized shackle. The next day, I rented a bicycle for two outings. The first was up a rail trail along the shore of the estuary and river that eventually leads across the entire island. There's a cycle trail that goes all the way from this east coast to the west coast. I might try it when I come back in April. But I mean, just look at the scenery here. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's a mixture of introduced eucalypts and then these massive tree ferns all over the place. Wow, that's quite something. I'm not up for it today by any means. You need to carry stuff with you and find a place to stay at the other end. And here's my steed for the day. The helmet's protecting the bike very nicely. And I'm taking a more modest trail, a, a rail trail. This gate means you have to time your bicycle trip for a short train ride to connect to the rest of the trail. Along this trail, and all others I rode and hiked are regular traps for rats, possums, and other problematic animal introductions in an effort to protect indigenous fauna like the kiwi, which are nevertheless commonly imperiled by domestic dogs. And later I rode inland on a gravel road leading to this view across the hills above Opur. Oh, it's Monday, the 20th of November. A big storm over the weekend here, lots and lots of rain. Here's Cambria, a Canadian boat following us out. And back there is Opua. Looks like we could, still could get a little bit of drizzle. There's a sightseeing helicopter going over here. And uh, yeah, it's just a marvelous place. I've enjoyed Opua for four days. Now it's time to get out to the uh, Bay of Islands and do some cruising down to Fangarai. Wind's dead behind us, so we're just idling down with the Genoa up and the engine going and 
hopefully it'll be a very quiet night out here. Ah, oh, it's the Monday the 20th of November and I'm coming into a spot called Manga Hawia Bay. Nice sandy beach in there. Let's see if I can find a nice anchor spot. Weather's clearing up after the storm we had this weekend. Hopefully a nice quiet night out here. Looks like I got the place to myself. Here is our anchorage in Mangahawea Bay on Motorua Island and the inviting sandy beach with a view back to sea change and several signs welcoming one to the island. Well, shorebirds quite unhappy with me. I wonder if they've got a nest or chicks somewhere here. Got a rusty, a rusty breast. Otherwise, yeah. Oh my gosh, you are bold. Yes, you really are. You're upset with me, aren't you? Are you gonna feign a broken wing? Is that it? And now she's pretending, I presume it's a she, is pretending to nest over here. This one's feigning a broken wing. Wow, definitely a nest here somewhere. This is impressive. They're really brave. Look at this. Well, I'll look for the nest, but I don't think there's much hope of finding it. These brave shorebirds are dotterels identified with the assistance of an excellent website called New Zealand Birds Online. Each bay had one of these stone carvings and an information sign with an image of an endangered bird that had been established on this reserve. In this case, a little bird called the Whitehead. And a map of a circular two-hour walk around the island, which was too tempting, so I set off up the nearby hill with a view. This uh, island has a trail all the way around it, which I'm walking right now in a forest of uh, kind of scrubby trees. I presume they're endemic, but there's just bird song everywhere, including a little bird called a whitehead. I can't remember the Maori name, I'm afraid, which apparently was reintroduced here. It's a gorgeous song. That one you might hear now. Not sure what these guys are. I think they're Eurasian blackbirds, but I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just full of tree ferns and damp earth and grass and I'm walking barefoot, which is pretty amazing. We'll see how far I get barefoot. And here's, it looks like Pantana, but it's not, I mean Pantalus, it's not, it's something else. Huh. And here we come out onto a, another little cove. I'm not sure whether this is a, supposed to be a proper anchorage or not, but nobody here. Oops, there went some big bird that I didn't quite get a look at. Well, there's a sailboat way over there. It looks like they're headed back to Opua. And uh, yeah, I have no idea the origin of all these grasses. They do not look. No, I mean, they look like they're generic from all over the place. Let's see what the sign has to say. There we go. They're really working hard to keep these uh, islands free of rats. There's lots of traps all over the place. Another lovely beach. Absolutely no plastic in sight, but also not a lot of interesting shells. Well, here's a large scallop. All right, I guess we keep going that way. There's a lot of things to get used to here. 
you come up to a little freshwater stream like this and there's no sign of life no fish no frogs nothing because you couldn't get here no freshwater fish at least here no frogs not even bird tracks around because there's nothing to eat really unusual getting used to this no thorns either no thorns on any of the plants because there are no vertebrates eating them there's a pair of the tuis here and they were singing like crazy there they go see if they won't give us another song but also chipping away is the whitehead that they apparently reintroduced here in 2015. It's so small, it's hard to see. They, they behave like tits, uh, foraging upside down in the trees and presume they're gleaning insects. Come on, give us one more call. There's another one just come into the tree on the other side. As soon as I stop recording, they'll call. There's the little white head right here. All over the place. There we go, that was the song of the Tui. Liquid call. They have all sorts of corns. And here's a little forest of tree ferns along this little stream. Again, nothing, nothing living in it as far as I can tell. Here's one of the traps for catching rats. I mean, it's just marvelous. An amazing place. I think these are Eurasian blackbirds. A really pretty red bill and reddish r rusty on the wings. And then I don't think they're still here. The red headed parakeets. There are a whole bunch of them here. Don't see them now. Coming down to another bay here. Huh. Oh, there go the, there go the uh, parakeets. Yeah, you can just barely see them. Green, there they go, there they go. Whole lot of them, whole flock of these. There's another, one. There's a, another parakeet though that I saw, unbelievably colorful, must be called a rainbow or something like that. There they are, sitting on that stump. Relatively unscared of us. Oops. And then one of these uh, Eurasian, I think, blackbirds right here in this bush. Here's something else. It's got red bottles and a black bill, brown back. Wow, spectacular. It's eating these little berries here. This is the red crowned parakeet I was seeing in the flock. And the last unusual bird is called a saddleback. Both of them re-established on this island. While the rainbow-colored parakeet I saw was an introduced Australian species called the Eastern Rosella, this photo from Glencore on the New Zealand's Birds Online website. And here's the next bay. They even provide toilets over on the right. And the next island on the other side, which appears to have a home on it, in amongst these Norfolk pines there. But this one, and I'm on, unoccupied and as far as I can tell I'm the only person here. Yep. Yet another cove. 
think this is the last one before I get back to sea change. And turns out I'm not alone here. Three boats. One's a French trimaran, pretty beat up. The other one, double ender like mine, but I'm not sure what it is. And then a typical Beneteau or something. And, uh, yeah, this is a totally different beach. Pebbles all the way along, a little bit of sand at the end. The only reintroduced bird I'm not confident I saw was this little robin. And here is the view to Cape Brett in the distance, which we had to round to get south to our next anchorage. Now it's Tuesday, the 21st of November, and I'm headed further south towards Fungarai. And uh, this is Cape Brett. There's a lighthouse here. And got to get all the way around it because it's the obstruction for going south. In between, there's this rock here. Let's make sure we don't hit it. And then I'm not sure about that big one over there. I think I'm going to go outside of everything, uh, just out of safety concern. But really dramatic shore all the way along here. Very nice. see if there's anybody associated with this rock here. I don't see any birds or anything else on it, although there obviously have been at times. The lighthouse is appropriately high up on Cape Brett and the keeper's home is now a hut for hikers on the Cape Brett Trail. That's oh, quite a spectacular rock here that I'm sailing around. Uh, I think it's called Piercy Rock. And uh, it's got a channel right through the middle of it. It's pretty amazing. A couple of guys fishing here, one on the left, one on the right. And there, where well, it's just disappearing, is the lighthouse. This is Cape Brett. Have to get around it. I could have tried to go through the gap there, but there's a pretty strong tidal surge coming through. So I decided to go around instead. And we're motor sailing because for a while we were in the lee of those cliffs. Now we've got some gusts coming through here. We'll be able to sail eventually. Although maybe not. Looks like we've got a headwind. Probably have to keep motoring to get where we want to go. This is quite a place. Now we're coming into a large, large deep bay here called Wangamumu. Wangamumu Bay. And way in the distance there where I'm headed, you can see a, what looks like a large catamaran. But that's all, as far as I can tell. And, uh, as usual, along here, very rocky, wild shore. Millions upon millions of birds today. Just amazing the, uh, the bird life associated with the ocean here. Obviously, very healthy system. Alright, so I'm anchored in Wangamumu Bay. There's a helicopter delivering something up there. Been doing it all afternoon as I came in. Not clear to me what it is, there's no obvious smoke from a fire. And it goes up and holds very steady just on the other side of the ridge, so I cannot see what's happening. I must be lowering supplies for a building job or something. Wow, good pilot. Anyway, with that background noise, this is the rest of the bay. Over there, that little structure, it's actually quite a big structure, is an ex-whaling station. I'll go over there and check it out later on. You see the entrance that we came through. And a big cat, it's an Utrama style cat, but it's not an Utrama, it's something else, maybe an H&H &H or something. And the most amazingly well-protected bay, I mean, just couldn't ask for more. It looks like there's a trail up the hill here. So I'll 
go for a walk this afternoon. Sweet. Here is our anchorage in Fangamumu Bay and the satellite view of how well protected it is. This is a whaling station in Huangamumu, very well known one. There's a lot of concrete slips up and look at this ancient, presumably a diesel engine winch. A massive flywheel on the side here. And you can see the crankcase in the middle there. If I'm not mistaken, it was a two cylinder. And then it would winch up a chain of some kind over here with some gears. Wow. You can see remnants of a railway here that was presumably part of the slip. These massive concrete bunkers here were for boiling down the carcass afterwards, presumably using steam generated by this monster boiler up at the top there. And then there's a few more concrete structures here. Wow. What an absolutely gorgeous day. And uh, here's the slipway, the remnants of it, the concrete underneath the water. And there's the catamaran I'm sharing the anchorage with. And way over here, the sea church. And I found a gorgeous little waterfall. Is the second there's a smaller one further down just lovely and i was bright enough to bring my shampoo with me i can have a nice wash and just without me falling down here there's the stream running down to the first waterfall i'm not being a botanist i have no idea what this is but it's profuse all over the place here. See if I can get the flower a little bit better. There we go. Lots of these lilies look like Aram lilies. Very similar to what you see in South Africa sometimes. And of course, being a land of black ferns, just gorgeous, gorgeous ferns. By the end of the day, there were several more boats in the bay and one of which was a kiwi boat that took me fishing for red snapper and I also caught a gurnard, an amazingly colorful, unusually shaped and very tasty fish. I hiked a trail up to the ridge of the Cape Brett Trail, parts of which were being refurbished, which explained the helicopter deliveries. Well, it's Thursday the 23rd. I've had two nights in Wangamumu Bay, which is this bay here, here's the inlet. Hopefully I'll get a view of it later for a pic. And um, I'm walking the uh, Cape Brett Trail, but uh, oh boy, it's uh, an eight hour trail, so I'm not going to be able to do it all. Uh, we've got a kite coming through here. Let's see if I can pick it up and a sailboat down the water right above. And Cape Brett that away another five and a half hours there's a hut there so presumably one could reserve that and stay there wow it's a windless day this poor guy's motoring and um, so there's no point this afternoon I will go along to the next bay along Wangaruru and now the view to the north this is the famous Bay of Islands Opua is way back on the left somewhere in up the estuary. There's a little bit of sunlight, which is nice. The big, let's see, yeah, I think the island in the middle there. Let me see. Got a finger up here. No, not going to work. Oh, there we go. That one is uh, Motorua. That I um, stopped at the other day and walked around. And way in the distance there, you can see Cape Wewiki, and the rock there is Tiki Tiki Rock. It's where I came in from the north, way up there. And Cape Brett is another, another six hours that way. So 
ain't gonna happen today. But wow, what a place. I'm nearing the end of this crazy hike. There's Cape Brett way over there. Another day. This is the entrance to Wangamumu Bay. And uh, the bay itself is just down here. I've got a couple more hills to go over and down. But then you see the coastline continuing all the way down here. Wow, so gorgeous. A bathe in the waterfall was much appreciated after this six hour hike. And in the last episode, I finished my season sailing to and within Fangaray Bay.